welcome to the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist for a time of building and expanding the kingdom of God within you. We are educating and equipping individuals around the world to build and expand in their dreams, goals, visions, purpose, and destiny through biblical principles and applications. I am your host, Apostle Deron Shay Zorn, your kingdom strategist, here to release strategies and revelations to unlock the kingdom within you. I am so excited to be with you on today. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us for another dynamic episode in this episode of the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist. We are talking about the piece of pandemic and epidemic success. We are in our series and the subject matter of the hour is understanding the problem you solve and its impact on your success at any given time, whether it's a pandemic or epidemic happening, whether a storm comes, whether situations and circumstances find their way at your door, in your environment. We're going to deal with or we're dealing with how to thrive no matter what is presented before you. And so I'm absolutely excited to have this conversation with you on today. But first, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for this moment, this time, this opportunity to be before you in your holy presence, O oh Lord, that you may give us divine wisdom, divine revelation, that you may give us strategies, O oh God, that we may live in the absolute truth of your holy word in the majestic name of Jesus, that it may manifest in our lives and that we will lack absolutely nothing as you've given us the ability to generate wealth. And we thank you that according to the Jeremiah 29 and 11 plan, that we are so a part of it and that you've called for us to prosper that you call for the work of our hands, O oh God, to be blessed and everything that we touch to prosper. And we bless your holy and righteous name. We thank you for unlocking mysteries and, and unlocking, O oh God, potential, O oh God, uh, making those things that have been dormant, activating them right now in the name of Jesus. Giving us, O oh God, the strength that we need to move by faith, live by faith and not by sight. So that, Lord God, that we may experience the goodness of your promise, the glory, God, of your majesty in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we glorify you and magnify you and and how we give you absolute praise, almighty God, as you continue to do a great and mighty work. We thank you that you who have begun a thing, that you shall complete it until its very end. So we thank you for the listeners coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that they will be blessed beyond measure, that they will walk away, oh God, as your word come forth and and penetrate our hearts and our minds and activate the very essence um, of it in the depths of our souls. In the name of Jesus, that atmospheres will begin to transform Hallelujah on your behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 
Oh, how we give you glory and we give you praise. And it is in Jesus' name that we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. You are listening to the Build Your Empire with the Kingdom Strategist. And I am so excited to speak with you on today. Before we go any further in the broadcast, I want you to go ahead and share this show on your social media platforms text somebody email somebody the information so that they can join in to this powerful conversation so they can understand what god is releasing in this hour so that we may be successful in spite of what may be taking place globally nationally right or even within our state, city, community, no matter what. So we're going to have a powerful conversation. Go ahead and influence your circle on today so that you all, right, can get the nuggets to be successful. You can connect with us on the following platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Kingdom Strategist and on Twitter at KB Strategist. With questions and comments about this topic on today, I would love to continue our conversation as we release these amazing nuggets on today. So today we are talking about the piece of pandemic and epidemic success. We're dealing with understanding the problem you solve and its impact on your success at any given time. So as we talk about this word, the problem. So our P today, problem, right? So we've already understand or we under stand that our purpose solves a problem or we understand that it is the solution that somebody needs that is absolutely amazing that is absolutely amazing so let's let's start here because i want to make sure that we all understand what a problem is. A problem is a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome or harmful and needing to be dealt with and overcome. So this is the matter of a thing. That even in the pandemic, the people that you're called to serve, the problem that your purpose is the solution for it still exists and people still have that desire to overcome whatever obstacles or challenges that you are called to help them do that's why it's that's why it's very important to know your purpose as it helps you understand the problem that you solve and the people that you are going to serve the thing about even with knowing what the problem is the problem prompts an action or it requires an action so that it can be solved And this is where you come in. I want us to also understand before we just dig into this topic for today. I want you to also understand that God gives us a promise. 
right? He gives us a promise. And that as he gives us a promise, with that promise, he has called forth people that he has made the solution that that promise may manifest. I want you to also understand is that your purpose is to deliver the promise of God to someone else. Now, usually the, the promises that God gives us, it is to solve an issue that we have, right? God gives us promises so that our issues, the problems that we're dealing with can be solved. And he's placed people in the earth with a purpose to solve that problem. How cool is that? God is just awesome and absolutely amazing in that manner. So let's deal with a few things here and let's go in the word. A few things I want you to also know is this. Um, once you understand your purpose, then you can begin to what I call reverse engineer and 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 really begin to understand with clarity the issue that your target audience, the people you're going to serve, will have. Will have. And it will position you in a greater place with to bring forth products that will appropriately serve them with their problem okay so know that that your purpose does solve a problem so let's look in the word of the lord and look at a few places where we can identify these factors so i want to take you to the book of jeremiah chapter 1 and 10 first and this is where god is revealing to jeremiah his purpose and the word says see i have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant wow so this here is his purpose that god's called him for to do so I'm glad that you guys have written out your purpose, your purpose statement that has been developed. And for those who have not, I want you to go ahead and write out or write down your purpose. Why are you here? What is the thing that God has called for for you to do? Because what's going to happen, we're now going to look at our purpose and dissect it, break it up, right? We're going to break up our purpose. Uh, purpose statements and the reason why we're here and really begin to analyze so that we can clearly identify and define the problem that our purpose solves so here in the text jeremiah um now, in the text, we can identify that he's here to, he's the people that he would serve, or those that he's called to, his target audience, right? He's dealing with nations and kingdoms, so he'll be dealing with kings. Those in government is who he will be dealing with, right, when, when we're looking at this here. And this is the way he's to serve them or to serve um with what's happening so um to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant so that is how he's going to serve and then one would say well why do he have to do this before i answer that question i want to pull out some things go ahead and so that we can clearly even morally identify what our purpose is go ahead and look at the action verbs that's in your purpose because this is the activities 
that you're going to have to make sure that your product or services is doing, right? The work that you do need to be measured by these things. The work that you do, that's your action. So, right, so it's effective that works is dead. So your works need to come into strategic alignment with what your purpose is you should be producing. And so this thing says, it says to root out or uproot, depending on what version you're looking at. So if it says to root out or uproot, Listen, this is what it means. Uproot root means to move from their home or a familiar location. So it's, hey, Jeremiah, you're going to have to move kingdoms and nations from their home or familiar location, from their kingdom. So it's going to be kingdoms that's going to be um, uprooted. Um, he said, tear down. So what tear down me an act of completely dismantling dismantling something so a part of his assignment of, of what he's called to do is that that he had to dismantle various things within kingdoms and within the nations we'll talk a little bit more about that All right even as he had to go forth and, and tell, speak with us at, at says the Lord. I mean, he had to look at uprooting bad habits and um, and things that was contrary to the word of God that Israel would not do. So he had to speak against those things and he had to speak what the truth was. And not only that, he even had to prophesy them going into exile, being uprooted out of Jerusalem. Right. And being overthrown by he Nebuchadnezzar. I'm just saying. And so you you we gotta dig down into this thing. Like, why is he having to do this? Because this is gonna let us know what problem he's getting ready, um, what problem his target audience is dealing with. So we already know that they gotta be dealing with rebellious. They have to, you know what I'm saying, be dealing with um and then you have to see what you know what type of rebellious and things of that nature and god will you know continue to unfold that you know in his life as god give him the prophetic utterance of what it is that he has called for for him to do so he said i want you the other thing he said unto him you're going to destroy destroy means to put an end to an existence of something by damaging or attacking it he told him to overthrow an overthrow means a removal from power, a defeat, or a downfall. And for those who are familiar with the text, we understand what happened to Israel under Jeremiah's reign in his prophetic office as he went forth with just the word that God had given unto him time and time and time and time again, right? And he was just uncompromised. Um, with the word, he just spoke it just the way God needed. And we know that for even those 40 years, right? He, he took he pressed out 40 years and um, the manifestation, right? He's seen because of the, the, um, the hardness of their hearts to not follow the obedience of the command of God. You know, he's seen the whole, not only did he see it, but he prophesied it. Um, as God had given it unto him, and he was there to witness it as well. So he also was called to build. And and to build is to is to simply use as a basic for further progress or development. Right? It also means to construct something typically something large by putting parts and materials together over a period of time. So he was also called to build. And so that means that if something needed to be built, right, it is something that needs to be developed. It was something that needed to be put together, that needed to be structured. Um, also, he was called to plant. Plant is placed or fixed in a specific, specific location specified location and so as we look at the activity that jeremiah did in his life we will find that it points back to 
these very six components that God had told him that he would have him to do, right? And so as you go through your purpose, begin to go ahead and circle those action words that's there. And so these are the type of actions that whatever activities you do, that you have to uh, make sure that they align with one or multiple of these things so that you can be intentionally putting your time, your talent, and your treasures into what it is that God has called forth for you to do. We have to understand the problem that we are solving so that we can again begin to formalize the product or solution, right? The product or products, right? That we're going to put together or to resolve a matter. I want to go ahead and look at somebody else real quickly. Real quickly, I want to go and look at Moses. Now, um, Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3 and 4. And then with action, um, chapter 3 verse 4, this is when God began to, not verse 4, I'm sorry, verse 10. He began to commission Moses. So as he began to commission Moses, this is what he says to him. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Hmm. Cool is that? So, his he was going to here. We're going to see that the people that he was serving, he's serving the children of Israel, right? And so, what he needed to do for them was to bring them out of Egypt. So he was to get them moved from one location to another, right? And he was to lead them into the land that flowed milk and honey, the promised land, the land of Canaan that God promised um, Abraham, right, um, for the children of Israel and oh, for his descendants, right, still the children of Israel. So this promise that God had gave um, Abraham over 400 years ago. Now he has, now 400 years later, he got Moses in the position. He's given him his purpose so that he can go and fulfill the promise. Right? He can go and, and, and fulfill the promise or take Israel to the promised destination, destination of promise. Praise the name of the Lord. So, but even with that, so that's what he got to bring them out. But then he also had to deal with, he said he's sending him to Pharaoh. So when we say, okay, so this is what his purpose is. He's being sent to Pharaoh to bring um, Israel out of Egypt. So then one will begin to ask, what does this problem what does his purpose solve so you're asking yourself what does my purpose solve and so when you begin to ask yourself what does your purpose solve then you begin to investigate well what type of issues that the children of israel is having that 
They need to be brought up out of the land of Egypt. And how is Pharaoh being a part of this? And then so, he says, and then so, you begin to look at, and, and God does give other texts in here that help us clearly define, you know, why Moses was doing what he was doing. So, we'll, we'll go back up, right? And you'll see it clearly broken down in this manner. So, we're go to verse 7. And God began to reveal unto Moses. And the word of the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who were in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel have come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them, right? So as we begin to break this thing down, he's leading them out of Israel. There's there's a few things that's happening here. Number one, they're being oppressed. So God said, I'm delivering them out of the hand of their oppressor. And so Moses, it's your position to bring them out from under, and your purpose to bring them out. From under this oppression of Pharaoh. The other thing we have to understand is that um, Israel, since Israel had been formed through Abraham, Israel to, at this particular point had yet to have a place of their own, land of their own that they could call their own. They always stayed or preoccupied somebody else's land or on someone else's land, right? And so this would now also give Israel a place that they could call their very own. A place that they could call their very own, uh, which is amazing, right? And, um, and so now they're no longer wanderers now. They're no longer, um, you know, homeless, you know, pretty much. And so, um, and so it, and it will fulfill the promise that God gave to Abraham, you know, to this very fact, um, as well. So a couple of things are, is being addressed here for the children of Israel, but just look at how God is a promise keeper. The other thing that you have to understand um, that's that's not read here, but when you you go back, I think in chapter two or chapter one, when they begin to cry out to God, because He also told him, He said, "Listen, I see their afflictions and their misery." He said, "I hear their cries for help. I know about their sorrow and their deep and and I'm deeply concerned about them." See, God has positioned you within purpose or you to be uh, in the earth for such a time as this with your purpose because he knew because he's Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end of all things what was going to be happening in the times and he needed for you and I to be moving in our purpose so that people can be uh, delivered or people right can come from under oppression state so people can um, experience his glory um, as well. So, um, here in this particular text, we see the purpose. Oh, this is what it was. So, if you go back in chapter 2 or chapter 1 of Exodus, 
you would hear or you would, uh, the word will tell you, you know, you will read about Israel, about Israel and Israel going and um, cry, cry, praying before God. And as they, they was praying before God about, you know, the issues that they was having with the taskmasters. And they also, as they was praying, you know, they also talked about, um, you know, the promise, the covenant. So I'll go back in Exodus 2, 1 and 2, chapter 2, because it's in chapter 2, verse 23. It said, now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out. And their cries came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and acknowledged them. Right, okay, so now that we're looking at, you know, how this, how our purpose, how to look at our purpose and begin to understand the problem. So now um, that our purpose solved, so now Moses now sees that he has a people who are going to be in pain, a people who is discouraged, you know, a, a people who you know, it's disappointed, who hurt, who's, you know, under oppression. And so he knows that, you know, these are the type of people that I'm getting ready to serve. These are people that need help from coming out of whatever is keeping them from being able to live freely, from being able to access the promise that God has called for their lives. Right? So, with that being said, ask yourself, again, what problem what potential problem does my purpose solve right that's a great question you also want to as you look at those action words and those action words they're indicators you also say why do i need to perform these such actions as well right because it makes a great difference it'll help open up your understanding of why you're doing what you're doing why you're doing what you're doing what you should be doing right so that you can be very um so that you can be very, very um, intentional with what you do, okay? So, I want to go here to the Susan G. Coleman. This is their, their mission. is to save lives by meeting the most critical needs in our community and investing in break through research to prevent and cure breast cancer. So the problem that exists here for them was, well, first of all, what they would be doing is investigating and research right, that will prevent breast cancer. So breast cancer is there, is the issue or the problem that exists, which happens to be that noun thing, right? So 
that's what they are tackling or dealing with. So they're going to do that using the action word. They're going to be investigating and breaking research. Meeting critical needs in the community. So it's like how they're meeting critical needs in the community. So then it came to like, what are the things they're going to do to meet these critical needs? Breast cancer walk. You know, and, and, and whatever other activities, um, conferences and things of that nature right to meet the need or or investing you know getting funding to that focus on the research to prevent breast cancer what type of activities that they're putting together to generate those type of funds and things of that nature but they know that their problem is breast cancer so understand that even with this particular foundation and we know now they are helping like millions they have helped save so many lives around the world but know and understand that they have because of this problem the problem and so the problem came up in their lives right when um, Susie B. Coleman died of breast cancer and it made such an impact in her sister's life. She was like, oh, we're going to do something about this so that nobody else would have to encounter, right, what I've encountered with losing a sister and because of lack of research, um, the lack of things that was available to help back then um, to save a life as it came to breast cancer, it became her sister's mission to make what did not happen for her sister happen in the lives of millions around the world. And because of that, research says that since 1982, they funded more than $988 million in research, more than $2.2 billion in education, screening, and treatment, serving millions in over 60 countries worldwide. And this has just been since 19. 82 just 30 some years ago just 30 some years ago how powerful is that 38 years ago and they're still moving and they're still crushing it right because you know they're still on that mission they're still on the mission making make it it happen right so she took right um, what happened in her life and right that that tragedy that pain and that loss in her purpose and identify her purpose and with identifying that purpose so many and through the problem that she had and she seen that it was a common problem among other people in the world and she came up with a solution. Came up with a solution and this have been the results so far. So what happens when we understand our purpose and we understand the problem that's at hand, the problem that at hand. So for her, it, the issue was breast cancer. For uh, Moses, the issue was Pharaoh holding Israel under bondage, right? Jeremiah, Jeremiah issue was um, the children of Israel being rebellious and disobedient, you know, um, on, to God. So what is your problem that your purpose solves or resolves for other people?
oh yeah for other people so understand that this thing is 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 for other people right it's the um to help you know other people and so we're going to really deal with that when we deal with the products that we bring forth and when we deal with um the the other stages of of the peace of success in a pandemic or an epidemic series so i'm 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 assured that this this thing here is definitely helping you you know identify what problem does your purpose solve so what this is going to help you do it's going to help you understand those who you're called to serve pain now most most of us are going to identify with their pain anyway your problem right um your, your purpose or the problem that you solve usually you're going to be able to identify with it in some form shape or fashion so so like um susie b coleman's sister you know she was able to identify with what other families were going through she's able to identify what um breast cancer um patients are going through as well as she walked with her sister you know through um her um her experience right with this traumatic disease and so she, you know so emotionally she she knew um that emotional dynamic she understood uh the mental dynamic right from a sibling or you know a, a close someone close to the person that's experiencing it and i'm sure that her her sister was very close and she was able to um identify with you know her what the process that her sister was going through physically mentally and emotionally as well as it was going through the process into you know, um, her life was taken by um, this ugly disease. And they've done a, tra a tremendous job. And so even, you know, like myself, you know, I, I'm called in, in, in the area of Christian entrepreneurship to increase market to build strategies and solutions so others can birth or expand in their dreams their goals and their destiny and a part of that is in helping them increase in addition to increasing their influence their impact and their income so and I'm very passionate about that so you know even for myself I had to come into a place of understanding look what wh why am I why are we building solutions why we're we building strategies you know what is an individual dealing with or what are they struggling with what are their pain points um that that um that is causing them or that would cause them to need to have somebody to coach or midwife or teach or help them bring the structure that's needed together and you know i remember having conversation with god and and god begins he told me these is that where he said listen Pete, everybody got a blueprint According to Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, the blueprint is already in place. And he would say, everybody, however, everybody do not understand or know how to build the design that I've laid out for them. And so they're going to need you to help them build it out for them, help them build it out. And that's another reason, another portion of why God has in, independ, independently intertwined all of us together so that uh, that we work together 
right? That's why we're many members of one body um, so that we can work together to, to make it all work. Also, another fact to that, if you go over into the book of Deuteronomy, you will see where when the um, two and a half tribes, they wanted to stay on the side of the Jordan um, that that wasn't a part of the land of, Can of, the, land of Canaan, the promised land. Um, you know, God said, yeah, you can do it, but you can't do it until you help your brothers attain the land that they've acquired. So we're here to help one another in the work that God has called forth in our lives. So it is a collective work that as we collectively work together, that every and every person's independent purpose or assignment is getting complete, right? So that's one of the things that I absolutely love about that. So when it comes, so I, I, I build. So for those who may not have heard, so your know, kingdom strategy is great that, that builds um, solutions build strategies so with me needing to build solutions and build strategies it helped me understand now that my target audience the people that i serve the problem that they have that they are confused about or they're confused about what it is that they need to do to properly produce or uh, to properly produce what it is that they need to do and so they're struggling with the action steps that's needed to start a thing or expand in a thing. And so they need clarity. And so they need, um, they will need for me to come in and help them bring clarity. And with bringing clarity, give them foresight, insight um, on ways, avenues, and things of that nature that will help them successfully build out their program, their product, their service, their ministry, you know, um, their endeavor, whatever that it may be. So I, I come into complete understanding, you know, of that by understanding, listen, you are called to help them build strategies. So I have to come, you know, so you are, the solution that they need to help them get from point A to point B. And to help them clear up any places of confusion that they have or anything that may be a hindrance unto them from moving from A to B. They need to get to the expected end. And it is my responsibility to clearly identify the path to get there Clearly to help identify obstacles, challenges that are currently there, how to overcome them so that they um so that they would be able to successfully maneuver through or conquer these things, right? So that, that's a part of what I do. So I, I come in. So I, I know I come in, right? A, in a, a part of that build analyzing strategizing analyzing current procedures current processes you know current um structures they're in place current things that are currently being doing that's working and that's not working and and things of that nature having that specific process that um that i work through and walk through in any corporation entity ministry per someone's personal life to help them, you know, get to that end. And we first start with what, and, and listen, you, we begin with the end in mind. And it's like, okay, what is your expected end? And with understanding the expected end, then it's examining, where are we? And looking at all the dynamics that are right now in our now, or right there in their now, And just identifying, like I said, pathways, identifying roadblocks, identifying very distinct. And, you know, um, it's one of the things that I just absolutely love to do. And, it, and, and it's been a part of me. It's been a part of my DNA, even since a little girl. And I can say for me as well. Just like um, Susie B. Coleman's sister 
is that my purpose strategically out of the things that I endured in life. So, and it came from being born, raised up in a place of chaos, a place of confusion, a place where there was no structure, a place that, you know, that for me, um, <laughs> you know, it was just, it was just not that family, it wasn't that family dynamics, like, you know, you may have seen on a Hustables or in any, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Um, family structure because it was just full of so much of the opposite of of what a family should be um especially you know from the biblical perspective and so and you know and I always refer to my fam my upbringing and and where God found me to Genesis, you know, in the book of Genesis, Genesis one and one, you know, I swear that was my love story, the love story that that God wrote for me about my life. And, you know, he just put it in, the, you know, in, in the word, right? Because it, to me, it was a place that was formless, that it was formless and, and it was empty and it was dark, right? And, um, and, but I praise God that he found me there. But you, listen, I had to understand chaos, right? I had to understand chaos, I had to understand brokenness. I had to understand emptiness. I had to understand formless lack of structure and all of those type of things. To now be able to um, know the vital importance of having procedure structures and things of that nature in your life um, so that you can be productive, so that you can be successful, right? I had to understand those things and everything I touch in life, you know, it deals with that. So I, I talked about business a little bit earlier and I didn't really get in the depth of it, but we know for sure that it deals with structure. We, we know that it deals with finding solutions, building strategies, you know, putting things in order and in place. So ministry is likewise. Ministry is, you know, divine order restoration ministries. Our purpose is to restore the order of God, one life, one body, one nation at a time. So I'm dealing with restoration. What am I doing? I'm restoring. Restoring what? Order. Order of who? God. God's order, right? God's way, not man's way. And, you know, and so it deals with strategic, like teaching, preaching, educating um, people in the word of God, right? Um, And according to what God has spoken and helping them identify things in their lives that that is outside of the will of God so they can get in alignment with what God has spoken. It's a restoration. So in that restoration, I know that I'm dealing with people that are broken, that are hurt, that are confused, that, you know, um, that have been through various challenges in life, trauma, and so many other things that, you know, um, that are in pain, that are discouraged. So I know I'm, I'm dealing with brokenness and in and, and whatever form or however it came. And, and, and then finding myself in a place where, you know, let's look at how the things that they need so that they can um, get into that healthy place, get into that place where God has called them to be, you know, restoring in a place of restoration in their lives and restoration in their businesses, their ministries, in their families, in their marriages, in, you know what I'm saying, and things of that nature. So understand, and I also understand, look, even with knowing and understanding that, look, we're going to talk about this next week. Look, I got to know my people. We're going to talk about how understanding the problem is going to help you understand your people and be able to really dive into the target audience that you're called to serve. There is a process that goes with this. And as I was saying earlier, that this has been so part of my DNA um, that even my vocation, right? Um, 
my vocation. I've always wanted to be a computer programmer, analyst, technician. I can remember being a little girl in elementary school, just telling my grandmother, plain as day, I want to be a computer programmer, analyst, technician. That was going to be my job title when I grew up. And, you know, and I'm just putting all forms of titles together, right? These are different positions. But each of these positions, they dealt with analyzing a problem and solving them. So that is what I do in ministry. That's what I do in business. It all worked together for my good, right? That is like, it's the core of what I do. It's the core of who I am. And I just don't deviate from that. I don't even know how to deviate you know, deviate from that once, but once I found out, it didn't start until I found my purpose. Once I found out my purpose, then I was able to understand the problem that I solved. So looking at that purpose, again, I'm going to recap. And so you have to know your purpose. Once you understand your purpose, you got your purpose written down. Now go and highlight or analyze the verbs, the action steps that you will be doing and your activities and understanding that your activities that you do in life need to line up with um, one or more of the actions that you need to be taking place to be fulfilling your purpose and also understanding you know as you look at that as well looking at what is that now right thing that you're dealing with the one that you're the the, the problem that is resolving whether it's um eradicating domestic violence right uh, whether it's you know um helping others identify their purpose whether it is um educating those who are you know you know illiterate whether it's um you know having um educational facilities whatever you know that it may be um whether it's to serve you know um those who are in poverty to end, or whether it's to end poverty, whether it's to um, eliminate a specific type of disease that's happening, or educate or bring awareness to it, just whatever it is, right? Whatever your thing is, whether it's to help others, help people increase income, help people to obtain income, and you know, and things of that nature whatever that it may be you have to be able to clearly identify it um the purpose through identifying the purpose you understand the problem through looking at the action items that that are that's written in your purpose and identifying um those nouns that are there so you can also identify who you're serving um what problem that they're having Right, we seen in Moses, it was clearly defined that Pharaoh was the issue. They needed to get out of Egypt. He was serving Israel, sending them, taking them out of Egypt to the Promised Land, and Pharaoh was the person, the thing that was hindering them from getting there. And so he, and what he needed to do was to deal with pharaoh which was the obstacle which was the problem pharaoh was the problem right <laughs> so he had to deal with pharaoh so that israel can come up out of egypt amen um i hope i know that this has been beneficial for you i want you guys to be on the lookout right um because there is a book and some products that's going to be uh, produced from this particular series as I want to be able to really help people dig in and dive into what it is that God has given unto them so that they can um, walk out that purpose so that you can um, live in the manifestation of what God has called forth um, in your life so that those can have the others can have access to what God has placed on the inside of you listen if this episode 
have been absolutely um, beneficial for you. I definitely want you to connect with me on your social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Kingdom Strategist and on Twitter at KB Strategist. Also, I'm subscribed to this broadcast and visit me at www.deranche.com to schedule your free 15 minutes consultation so we can see how I can serve you. You have been listening to the Build Your Empire with the King Dumb Strategies. I am your host, Dr. Deron Shay Zorn, your Kingdom Strategist. And I look forward to meeting you in the next episode. With that being said, until next time, build your empire in Jesus' name.